We're doing something a little bit different today. Johnny Millennium from Happy Console Gamer is here with me, and we're at the Capital City Classic Arcade. This is the one and only Classic Arcade in the Vancouver area, and it's in New Westminster, and you are friends with the owner of this space, Brad. And, yeah, and you just become friends with him as well, which yes, is awesome. And yeah, said we could come in and shoot this conversation, which is, I think, kind of, you know, a little bit of a celebration and also a little deep dive into some of the things that are going on specifically yesterday and today. You're talking about some old school games that are getting released, some old school systems, yes. and some new systems. Some released. brand new systems yeah. and some brand new technologies to allow people to play video yes. games. Yes, what do you want to start with? Well, let's talk about the Switch Lite, which is on sale today. This yes. is the launch of this new platform. Right. And you've got the review up on your channel. I do, yeah. And what, have you, what have you been thinking about this little uh, I device? I think it's a really wonderful handheld device. And you even came over, and we can say this, you said, oh my god, this is the new Vita. Yeah. It is because it's a handheld device. Yes. It's playing new school games and old school games right there in a portable machine really connects well. I mean, it feels very solid. It's not like the Switch where you can, can feel the Joy-Cons a little loose. This one's very sturdy. I was really surprised at how comfortable it feels in your hand right away and how different it feels from the other Switch that we oh, yeah. know and love, right? Yeah. It's, it is this all-in-one new portable kind of solution from Nintendo. Right, with some brand new features added in there. The D-pad is absolutely awesome. It's got a smaller vents on the side. Yep. It has a smaller screen, and a lot of people will be like, oh man, I don't know if I like the screen, because yeah. it's smaller. And then you start playing it, and you said it the best, it looks a little bit more high res because it's smaller. Yeah. I, that's true. That's what you thought. Well, too. I think it has the same resolution spec, but the pixel density is a little tighter. Yes. So everything sort of looks a little like it sort of pops off the screen in, in, a, in yeah. a way. Now, you're dealing with less screen real estate, so maybe you're not going to see every single detail that you would on a larger right. handheld current switch model. Right. But it still looks pretty damn good. And the other thing that we tested out, too, was uh, logging into your account on both your existing, right. your old Switch and your new Switch. So I had both accounts logged in. Yeah. You were playing Astral Chain. Yes. And then all of a sudden I started playing like King of Fighters, which is perfect for this place. Yeah. I started playing the King of Fighters and it logged you out. Yeah, because the way that it is right now, and I think presumably Nintendo is going to make some alterations with this, but you can have the same account on two Switches. It asks yes. you as you're loading up the software whether you want to attach it to an existing Nintendo account. So you can do that, and you can download every game that you have on your existing Switch onto the Switch Lite, yeah. and you can play them at the same time, but if they connect online at the same time, it looks Boom. like right now you one of them will be kicked out, and every time I, it looked like the Switch Lite was getting kicked out every yeah, and we turned off the Wi-Fi and all of that, and we could both play Astral Chain at the same time when yes. we were doing that, because you can have different saves on different machines. Yes, you can. Or you can use the online uh, cloud service to download your save. So yes. that's another option. But the thing that we had to do is I turned on airplane mode on the Switch Lite right. so that I was able to play the library that I had downloaded to the Switch right, yeah. while, while you were playing at the same time. So it's yeah. a little convoluted, and hopefully what I hope is Nintendo says, you know what, there's going to be households out there that have... Multiple. Uh, yeah, multiple systems. With one account. On one account, because, happen. you know, like a happen. family isn't going to want to buy six copies of Astral no. Chain. Yeah. But there might be... would be a smart family <laughs> if they did, <laughs> but, you know, exactly. Uh, you know, but, yeah, so I, I hope that Nintendo opens it up a little bit, like PlayStation and Xbox have. You right, can have right. multiple PlayStations on an account and multiple Xboxes. Right. What, what did you think of uh, feeling it? It's very light, isn't it? No pun intended. I, I, yeah. I, but I also like the sort of grippier feel of the plastic that they chose yeah. for it. It feels like a different platform than right. the existing Switch. It, yeah. it does feel like it's in the family, but it feels like a different machine. It I, feels I, a lot more like a, it's so a, a DS or a 3DS. Exactly. I was yeah. just about to say, it's so silly to say, it's so obvious of what it is, but it's a handheld. We can't stress that enough. Yeah. It's a handheld. It's Nintendo's new handheld. It's weird that it's called the Switch, though. It is, because it doesn't Switch. It, it does not Switch. That's what I said in my Nintendo Direct uh, but My reaction. prediction is that Somewhere, somebody in some lab right now is working on some USB to HDMI conversion so that through oh, the power, do I, I don't know. I mean, Nintendo would have to open up this software capabilities to allow right. people to do that, but something tells me someone's going to figure out some kind of port that you'll be able to put the Switch Lite and, on. And do you know what I was saying? Yeah. You know what's going to come next year and the year after and the year after that. <laughs> it's going to be a Nintendo Lite XL. Yes. An XL with a better screen. I mean, it's just going to keep on coming. This is the beginning, folks. It's the beginning. I, I do see the, um, the attraction of a device like this. You know, I would hate to damage my 
larger switch anywhere out there right. and the idea of having one that's a little bit more pocketable especially if i'm on a long flight or a long train trip or something like that the switch light does seem incredibly can, yeah. enticing yeah we just got to get a, a nice uh, cover for it to, to yeah. take with it that's a very important thing because it's portable yeah. it's not just sitting in a dock yes. it has to sit somewhere you don't want to scratch that screen but nintendo really has to make this you know that you can play in the household on the same game and let's say, like i my daughter wants a switch of her own so it'd be rad for me to be able to say we'll play with the uh, the switch light and yeah. let's play a game together off of my account without something crashing. Nintendo's got to figure and that, that out. And that's a good segue into talking about this. Link's Awakening, yeah. you and your daughter have been playing this. What's that experience like? Uh, it, tell me about that. It has been phenomenal to see my daughter Ruby become such a an avid fan of video games, but not to the obsessive point. Oh, I, not as yeah. obsessive as she's, your father. She's not me, yeah. which is great. Yeah. She yeah. has her own way in, and she's loving yeah. them, and she's loving you know that she's finding her favorites. And, and, uh, what she, are her favorites? She loves Zelda. Like Zelda? We, we, right. built Breath of the, we, we beat Breath of the Wild and Twilight Princess, yeah, and now we've be, beat Link's Awakening together. And she's, she is a real aficionado for this, and she helps me solve the puzzles in the game. She's always saying, go over there, go over there. Go. Yeah. She, she says, uh, go over there. She has, go over there. Go over there. And, go she, there. and she's making the voice and being yeah. funny, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I always say, it just sounds like, go over there. So, over there, Dad. Okay, we got to have Ruby's top five Zelda games. You know, what's her favorite Zelda game? Oh, she, she, her favorite game of all time is Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah. isn't that cool? But she loved Gris. Cool? We played Gris together. And, yeah. and yeah, she is, uh, or Gris, she, yeah. she is, uh, it, you know, she's totally into it. She's loving Astral Chain as well. She really, what? yeah, she thinks it's incredible. Yeah. Wow. What does she think of all the imagery? It's insanity. Oh, she, that game. she loves it, man. That's great. That's yeah, really she, a lot she, of fun. She will be a future host of EP. My, if she wants to be. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my. Imagine she just takes over. That'd be, that'd be amazing. <laughs> you know what I appreciate, too, about, about uh, Ruby is that she doesn't have any... Uh, uh, predispositions or any, uh, you know, past. She, yeah, she's not going to say no. I don't want to look into the into the history of video games. She she doesn't poo poo the concept of me putting on a Sega Genesis game or a Super Nintendo. It's all she, it's all fun for her. It's all interesting. Yeah, and, and that's I, what it should be. And uh, you know, obviously, the other big story that we've covered extensively on EPN is the Sega well, Genesis no, mini. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, really? Have you covered this on your channel, Vic? I've been all over your channel. I've never seen one video about the Sega Genesis mini. No one. Definitely not 10. Listen, they sent it to us a month ago, Sega. Uh, thank you, Sega. And, and you one, too. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's an interesting product it because, sure you know, it dives into a whole history of this machine, clearly. One that we grew up with at that yeah. time. Yeah. We sure did. And yeah. they did a great job with putting it all together. And because we had so much time with it, there was lots of time to kind of plan, you know, stories and, and conversations about yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Now, I said my 10 least favorite games oh, and my 10 suggestions... This. Did you have games that you think that shouldn't have been on the, the Sega Genesis Mini? Um, I haven't made it. I have made an extensive list. You're putting me on the spot right now. I know. We're gonna put it back to you. We're just going to get flipped right back to this guy. <laughs> Listen to this, Strider. I know. I got a lot 4. of heat. 5. I got a lot of heat. There's probably a Strider machine in here right now. Uh, this is I'm the getting a lot of these from travesty people out there. Known to mankind. We have to have this. Out. Listen to me. We're gonna talk about this right now. Okay. Okay. Let's... I love the art of Strider. Well, that, that's really uh, good. It's, so, it's yeah. a beautiful game, and it's a cool game I just didn't like the play of it I thought I found it very clunky especially next to games like you know Gunstar Heroes and Castlevania and Contra it just felt so no. not tight not precise listen, it felt very loose to me. and, it, and I don't know what did you buy Strider the day it came no, out I never I, I never I had it back then did and you I, play Strider in the arcades uh, yes, but okay. not obsessively. I right. obsessively yeah. played it in the arcade, so yeah. I had that experience. I, I drew comics of it back in 1989. I love Strider. I love the idea of Strider, but yeah. I guess I had built it up in my mind so much that when I went when to play went this, it just it was deflating. I just found it very difficult to play and very clumsy. It was, the, it was one of the biggest games. I know. On, like no pun intended, like a uh, memory size on the Genesis. That's how they, they sold it to you back in the day. Yeah. And when me and my friends were playing it down the street and we're seeing it, we're like, oh my god, this is the most amazing thing we've ever seen and that is why it's a classic it's a product of that time yes is it the best conversion ever no could there be better frames of animation absolutely but could, it's a could it feel like you're actually hitting the bad guys a oh, lot more and a lot better yes and oh, I, like, I was no, like no. why am I dying this is clumsy this is I, 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 can finish, you know? I can absolutely go through that game and finish it no oh, problem okay. very simple game listen I, I make this pledge to you and to all of you that I will continue to try to enjoy Strider and my initial reviews weren't based on like I didn't 
have 10 hours per game. I was playing them for as long as I, you know, could get into them. And then, and if I found like the game was pushing me out, I would just move on to the next game. You do know that you've hurt Strider's feelings, right? And, and no matter feelings. what you're going to say, you know, yeah. like in the future, I mean, it, yeah. the feelings are hurt. You know what my number on one replacement game idea was? What's that? Aladdin. Okay. And I, I was actually surprised. My top 10 substitution ideas yeah most people seem to be pretty cool with them i had mutant league football on there sure, nhl yeah, 94 yeah. mortal kombat 2 the strike series or BattleTech. do you ever play the BattleTech game on, uh a little on, bit yeah back in the day love, yeah love yeah yeah, yeah i remember that game yeah. for sure if there's some games i wish would have been on the machine would be war song mm. which is language it's like a, another kind of it's kind of a a version of Fire Emblem, not made by Nintendo. Yeah. That was an incredible strategy right. RPG back in the day. Well, they uh, had uh, um, striking. For, no, what was the the turn? Uh, shining Force. Yeah, they had Shining Force. They had Shining, on. which yeah. was a very nice to see on there. I'm not unhappy about that. Yeah. But if we we're gonna get nitty nitty gritty, I would like to see that on there. Yeah. I'd have to go into my backlog. The Crusader Sentai mm. would have been good. That's a Zelda Genesis uh, Zelda on there would have been really awesome as well. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Revenge of Shinobi would have been good on there right. as well. Right. More Shinobi games. Games. More Shinobi games, yeah. That's a, you know, I'd have to go into the backlog. They did a great job, though, right? Like, they yeah, really yeah. did. Like, and I would have liked all the fantasy store games, all of them. All of them, all yeah, of them and all there. the Sonic games. And even some and all Sega the Master System games, games, but, you know, yeah. that's whatever. And Sega CD games, yeah. I mean, we could keep going here. Why do the companies have to keep making these things, and, and what's their significance for uh, the, the modern video game industry? Why do they have to keep making the Sega, these minis? Yeah. Oh, well, for people like me and you, yeah. but the problem is, is there's not enough games on them. Right. Everybody's always arguing and mad and all that. You, they turn into that, right? Yeah, I mean, right. Not clearly, they, they, these videos have all turned into like fights and, and in I the like comments the Sega, section. I, I like the Sega Genesis Mini. I'm so happy that so many new kids and you know new people can play the games. But we we need all of the Sega games. Yeah. They yeah. should have all of them. They should have all the Sega Genesis games. Yeah, you, Sega, and least, what was crazy is you got the uh, the the tower, and I got right. the tower, right. and it comes Which I did with not that. Attach it properly. I <laughs> heard the end of that. <laughs> well, you got some comments too. Yeah, see so They come with a little tiny cartridge, and wouldn't it be cool if they made little? They do in Japan. They make little cartridges. Yes, in Japan. But do they have the games on them? Well, no, they don't have the games. But, we, uh, this is what we mean you were talking about if you bought yeah. that Sega CD. Wait, wouldn't mini it be cool? Yeah, wouldn't that be Yeah, amazing? you put it in and you got Lunar in there yeah. and Sewer Shark and all, all that in stuff. scale models of them. Right. They could have created a whole new physical, you know, they, sort of thing for them. And themselves. then you get the 32X. Yeah. You put yeah. that in there. It's got all the 32X games. I mean, Crazy, yeah. it, I know, I know. We, we should have done this stuff, but there should be more games on these machines. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, or some kind of digital store option There's or There's no reason why Sega could not have all of their backlog games on there. Well, Every, it's, the, it's the licensing around. I'm getting M2 to get to every damn game yeah. out there. And the third sure. party deals. Do you know what I'm hearing? Yeah. You want to hear something interesting? It's kind of breaking news before I left the house. Yeah. I saw on Twitter that a lot of people are getting the Sega Genesis Mini now, and there's no sound problems or, you know, the delay input. Nobody's seeing it. And some people are saying they fixed it before the release from the oh, reviewers. Could have. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not, it's not proven. Could have. But that was on Twitter before I left. I mean, I... I'm not the meticulous digital foundry, Neither am I. right? So when I played it, it was like, this is great. This I'm having is, fun. Yeah, this yeah. really kind of evokes all of my memories yeah. and everything like that. But uh, if Sega has been listening to the scrutinizing, and Digital Foundry actually did an amazing job oh, where, where they yeah. zoomed in on pixels and everything. So, so did uh, GameSag. Joe from GameSag did yeah. an amazing job. So for sure. I, if they've done that, then hopefully there'll be some kind of firmware thing that you can do through the USB. I, so here, I'm, I'm not, I had a chance to ask you this. Are yeah. you going to get the TurboGrafx yeah. Mini? Yeah, I am. And I didn't have that console. So oh. this will be all brand new to me. Oh, you're gonna have fun. I know you're going to be having like a parade down the street oh, in New Westminster hey, where you, you live. Watch my t you know, 10 videos in a row of that. You know, watch, you know 10 games I should have had on. I've already done a few of those already. But yeah, I'll be very excited to talk about that. Uh, all right. So that's the past. And I guess Nintendo is uh, sort of the the present with uh, and also kind of tipping the hat to their past in yeah, portable gaming. Yeah, you know, the Link's Awakening. Yeah, yeah and really, Link's Awakening. Yeah. Now, arguably, what is being presented as a bit of the future is this new subscription-based video game game model, this kind of all-you-can-eat yeah. model. Yeah. We, the industry is always tiptoeing around this kind of idea. Apple has got Apple Arcade, and it's out as of yesterday. You just downloaded with, it, didn't I you? I downloaded it, and it's uh, a part of the um, iOS 13 update. And uh, do you have any thoughts on this? I know you're not a huge mobile gamer fan. Not at all. Okay. So so, so my thing is is that I don't care yeah. because I'm not into mobile games. Yeah. Like on a phone. I don't want to play a game on my phone. Right. I'll play like a little little point and click thing like for like five seconds past time. Yeah. My wife loves mobile games. She loves it. She plays it all the time. 
But man, with the Switch lights now, I know, I know. Well, I mean, that's made for me. That's what I want to play. But this feels like an answer to that because I have to be honest, I was playing a lot of mobile games and we used to cover a lot of mobile stuff in EP prior to the Switch launching. And sure. the Switch launched and it's like, who's got time to play mobile stuff? There's all this Switch stuff. Now, right. Apple Arcade, the promise with this, and we're, I'm just starting to dip into these games, is that you don't need to be on the internet. There is no microtransaction stuff. You pay sure. you pay your monthly fee. It's six bucks in Canada, five bucks in the states, and you can play any of these games for as long as you want, anywhere that you want. You can be on airplanes, which always drove me nuts with with mobile titles. Why would they make mobile games where you would want to play them on the airplane, but they have to be connected to the internet? It's ridiculous. It's so stupid, yeah. right? You know, and it's all about the the Benjamins. But actually, now it's shifted to something totally different. Do you know what? I, I do you know for a lot of people they may really enjoy this. Yeah. But for me, look at this. I'm just going to turn right here. <laughs> this is an arcade machine. This has buttons and joysticks. I know. And you know, this is what I like. This is an arcade to me. Well, it's kind of funny that we're in here. I like the symbolization of reality. You know what? Pressing buttons. I don't want to be pressing a screen. Well, you know what? This might usher in, and it's still early days, uh, because of the success of the Switch. Yeah. And the idea that this is uh, like traditional game companies, they're working with Konami, they're working with lots of studios and lots of big brands to build games that may not debut here first, but there are some exclusives that are going to be here for a while at least. I think that this is going to open the door for more hardware manufacturers to come up with controllers that attach uh, Switch-like yeah. to phones. And that it actually might... Switch. Why would I need to get... The, why do I need to get a phone and attach a thing like, to it and have that in my... I mean, the, I want to pain in the The end. thing is, is that you have a phone. You That's probably true. have a phone before you have a Switch. I understand and that. And so some of these games could be as good as some Switch games. So that's how they're going to make money. I yeah, get it. I'm, yeah. I'm not against them making money. I get yeah. how they're going to make it. Yeah. I'm just not going to play it. I'm not interested at oh, all. Okay. I am. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we will definitely check back on all of that. Sure, but, yeah. Uh, I guess that's a, a kind of a, a state of affairs in the video game space. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about us playing a little bit of... Uh, oh, let's get on with it. Absolutely. I have to kick Vic's ass and Mark of the Wolves. Oh. It's going to happen. I wore my Keith Howard uh, sweatshirt for this uh, on purpose. Okay, I will let you kick my ass.